Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, and from verse 17. Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, and from verse 17. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Say, Amen. amen. Because he has anointed me. Say, Amen. amen. To preach the gospel to the poor. Say, Amen. amen. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. Amen. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives. And he has sent me to proclaim recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. He has sent me to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then he began, in verse 21, he began to say to them, Today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. I said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. By the power of the anointing of the Christ. That same power. That same destiny. That same purpose. That same glory and grace and strength and might of the Christ. I bring life to the poor. I bring healing to the broken. I bring liberty to every captive here. And everyone who will ever connect this. Wherever you are connected. Wherever. And you are in captivity. I bring liberty. And I bring recovery of sight to physical blindness and to spiritual blindness. Every blind eye, spiritual and physical, I bring you recovery of sight. I set at liberty everyone here and everywhere connected to this. Everyone who is oppressed, I bring liberty. I announce to you that this is the acceptable year of the Lord for you. If you have been waiting for healing, this is the acceptable year. You are healed. If you have been waiting for marriage, this is the acceptable year. Go ahead and marry. As I proclaim this word, this very scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, your doors are opened. Get ready to do the impossible. In Jesus' name. If it is personal to you, celebrate it and give God thanks. God. Glory to God. You are not celebrating it. Glory to you. Be seated, be seated. Glory to God. I'm excited. Praise God. I am excited. Good morning, family. Good morning, family. Good morning, the Rising Stars family. <clears throat> I say good morning, the Rising Stars family. You can say good morning, Father. Nobody will beat you up. I used to be a Catholic priest and my title is Father. If you call me Father, there's nothing wrong. <laughs> Praise God. Absolutely. So, good morning, Rising Stars family. Yeah, absolutely. I am Father Race to Power 2. No power, Race to Power 3. I still carry the Father that was given to me as a Catholic priest. I carry the Father that my four children gave to me through my beautiful ear. And I carry the Father of fathering you here. And I praise God, hallelujah. Praise God, hallelujah. At the end of this service, I will talk to you about the prayer belt. The prayer belt is preparing us to encounter the power of God and do the impossible. We're going to do the impossible. I'm excited. This is such a deep moment for me. Seven years ago, 28th of July, it was two weeks after my last day of ministry in the Catholic Church. And it was, no, it was one week. We finished ministry on the 21st. By 22nd morning, we packed things out of the pastoral center of the Catholic Diocese of Uyo into an unknown. Nothing was, nothing was there. Nothing was sure. Nothing was available. Nothing except God and faith in God. Trust in God. Grace of God. <clears throat> so we moved on. In life to do the impossible, the first step is you have to step into nothing. If you want to wait for everything to become something, and for everything to come together, coalesce into something, and so some, something so sure, then before you do the impossible, it's not called impossible, it's called predictable. There's a difference between impossible and the predictable. The pre predictable is that the conditions are right, and, and 
the expectations are ripe and the collaboration and the cooperation are available. Everything you need is just there. All is taken, all is required of you just to step out and do the engagement and bring them together. And it is called predictable. <clears throat> you knew this is how it would be like. It is predictable that one plus one, everything being equal, if it is not minus one plus one, if it is one, as in one plus one, it is predictable that it will be one, it will be two, sorry. <clears throat> it is very predictable. So when we talk about doing the impossible, it starts with somebody who is in the middle of nowhere, tired of the past, frustrated about the present, and longing for a, pre a future that does not exist. And it just looks like, okay, if there is God in heaven who cares about you, and who says, believe, and if I take the first step into nothing, let me hope it will create dry ground out of the waters, and I will stand. And if you go ahead and do that, it looks like you have a mindset of doing the impossible. That's what happened to me seven years ago. I have not always, on a Sunday morning, stood here to jump without chessable. Every Sunday morning, I could jump every other thing at the charismatic meetings. But every Sunday morning, you wear all the full vestments of the Catholic priesthood. And you have to enter into certain levels of decorum, of liturgical and ecclesiastical decorum. And just behave yourself and be charismatic within the, the ambit and the constriction of the vestments. I have not always done this. It is a future I did not see, but I longed for. Just felt like we have already seen this. This is predictable. Can only be better than this, but in this order. Why not flip it? And it looks like it didn't exist. I was told dark, pitch dark, but things are changing at the gates and they are speaking Japanese. And I say, guide me, O Jehovah. A song says, a hymn says, so put my first foot on the 22nd of July 2017. Seven years ago, took the first step, packed everything out of the Catholic, the pastoral, uh, secretary, the pastoral um, center of the Catholic, that Catholic diocese of you, <clears throat> packed everything away on them. And I bless God for people like Chris Morris, who are the ones who are living as remnants to see this moment. They were the the foot soldiers who packed things and got things and I warned them from take, taking some fixtures like ACs from office. I forbade them to carry equipment or leave all the fixtures, all the stuffs we are allowed to beautify the, our space. And we stepped into this nothing. So one week later, today is exactly one week after that crazy first step into nothing. I cannot tell you exactly how one week later I felt. It felt like a vacuum. There was a joy. But as 31st of July was approaching, there was a fear <clears throat> that was so real and so telling. A fear that was so silent and yet no, so noisy. I was not talking to any human being on earth. <clears throat> Sincerely, as at that time, I was not talking to any human being on earth to say, I'm going to resign tomorrow or not. I was not telling anybody to pray for me. I was just waiting. And a day to that 31st, on the 30th or so, the fear was so strong that I took a decision to change my mind. So I'm not sure this is necessary. A voice spoke to me because I was living with that voice. The only companion of my life was that voice. It spoke to me. If you don't follow through and do everything, that's what I talk about. You must write down specifically. Because from January to February to that, to that July, I was writing down on a monthly basis specific things that will happen. And I will pray Satan will happen at the end of the month. To actually make them for, into 40, 40 days. I will take the first lap of 40 days and prayed for us about seven things at the end of the 40 days i will review look at my my jotter my journal and review what and what has taken place so far and i'll recycle repeat 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 so 
you must write down something that you are confronting. It starts with that. That's what you, the prayer belt this week starts with that. You must write down one, two, or three, or just one. So that you will now use everything that is available in the scripture, in fasting, in prayer, in the revelation of the word of God that is coming on the first, which is Thursday, on Friday, <clears throat> which is second, and on Saturday, which is third at 1 p.m. And on Sunday, the communion miracle, impossible doing a service. service. And then, so when it's time to speak, you are not speaking in the air. You are not speaking. I spoke specifically for months. For almost actually about one year, I was speaking specifically for at least seven months before I resigned. See, every day, I will wake up at a particular time, pray for us, and I will come and sit down here in that tent where the security guys stay during the day and pray for us. And then in the evening, I will pray for us. And then in the night, I will pray for us. It was the only thing I could do with that voice. And the voice told me, if you don't follow through, you will regret. I was the only companion. And then on that third year, Chukwe Mecca will be here on, on Wednesday. I made him, I asked him to be my special, special guest of honor. I will introduce him. He was my secretary and my personal assistant. I told him, boy, print the letter and bring it. <laughs> and then the second step was facing your greatest fear. After you take the first step into nothing, face what you fear most in this life and deal with it. <laughs> Those are the rules. Then the word of God can only prove after you have stepped. Abraham had to first of all become Abraham before Isaac will arrive. You cannot stay as Abraham and receive Isaac. Something has to change radically in your spirit in your mind, in your attitude. Prayer, the way you pray must change. The way you fast must pray. It must change. Some people, they think doing impossible is easy. It is not. You will live the way you live. Things happening to you the way they happen to you. Things troubling you. Things ruling over you the way they are until you wake up on a day that you say, I'm tired of being tired. And you move forward. That's when grace begins to speak. Sir, Grace as a face, as a name. You can hold grace. So grace is, is, is a person. Grace is living. Grace as a name. And his name is Jesus. You need to try Jesus. <laughs> if you have never tried him, you will try him. My work for you this season and in God is to bring you the resources of the word of God. I will, I'm praying for you. I trust God that there will be one person that in seven years, your own story will change other people's lives. It's always one at a time. If you are that one person, get ready. The sacrifice you will make, the seat you will sow, the things you will give up. You cannot carry possible the familiar with you and think you will enter into impossible. You have to let go. Shed weight. You have to shed weight. Drop. You don't climb up a tree with things in your two hands. You drop what is available. The useless convenience and comfort. The useless laziness and predictable complaining and blaming. Blaming witches and wizards. Just hate to hear people blame witches and wizards. Demons cannot stop you when you step into the circle of God's grace. Jesus did not die for us to just to survive demons. He died for us to rule over them and to live in spite of them and spite them because a mighty rod is sent from Zion. Not so that you stay with your foes and struggle and complain, but that you rule. Say rule. I didn't hear you. Say rule. Rule in the midst of your foes. You are among those who sit down and complain about People do not like me. My boss does not like me. My husband doesn't like me. My wife and my, my this, my that, my that, my that. Change your world in Christ. There is power. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. The, 
the prayer belt, the specific things. Let's go into the mystery of the world. I'm excited to bring you the mystery of the firstborn. Glory to God. Shout. Say, tell somebody, I am God's firstborn. Oh, stand up and introduce to, to yourself to three, four, five, six, seven people. He said, you might not have known. Tell somebody, make it don't, make it don't like this. He said, you might not have known that I am God's firstborn. Tara, now you know I am God's firstborn. Not by age, but by grace. Say, Tara, I am God's firstborn. I am God's firstborn. Glory to God. Welcome to the church of the firstborn. Be seated. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 22 to 24. We will be starting from there from a couple, for a couple of weeks. Hebrews 12, 22. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. Powerful. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable, innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly. I love it. And church of the firstborn. General assembly of the firstborn. To the church. Those who are redeemed. They form the commonwealth of firstborn. They form the commonwealth. The association. The confederation. Commonwealth speaks of confederations. Commonwealth speaks of interlocking of entities. Of entities. So the church is a confederation the interlocking of different peoples nations societies social spaces economic spaces legal spaces people of every nation of tribe and tongue and, and people you can look at this in Revelation of God's chapter 5 I guess verses 9-10 uh, will give us and they sang a new song you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of what out of what come on out of every and 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 nation that's it that's the confederation so the church is the assemblage assemblage not at, just at the physical level Assemblage as an entity spread across the world. An assemblage of, can I see the, the scripture? An assemblage of people of every tribe. Assemblage of every tribe that has been redeemed. Every tongue that has been redeemed. Every people that have been redeemed. And nation that have been redeemed. And all of this, this tribe and tongue and people and nation they form the general assembly and everyone in that tongue everyone in that tribe everyone of that tribe and tongue and people and nation they become firstborn so once you come in christ through the redeeming blood the redemption blood the atoning blood of the lamb that had been slain once you have been washed and sanctified and purified and circumcised once you have accepted him as your lord and salvation your lord and savior and he has paid the price for your sin by his blood. And you have been justified by, by grace through your faith. And made righteous. And in spirit of destruction. Instantly your status changes. Instantly your status changes. Next week I'm going to... Okay, not next week. The upper week because next week is a, is a general assembly day. The, the, the joint assembly in communion and miracle of grace family every first Sunday. So in two weeks from now, I shall talk to you about grace, not age. So when it comes to firstborn experience, it is grace, not age. So when we talk about firstborn, take your mind off age. Because maybe you are not, what position are you sir, in your family? You are the last. Oh. So all this while that I'm talking about firstborn, you are sitting down there and looking at me and you're like, so what about us? <laughs> Michael Jackson sang a song, what about us? <laughs> so what about us, the last born? I will say, well, it is by grace, not by age. Praise God. 
it is by grace and not what not age so it does not matter your age and your position in the family don't worry revelation is coming in two weeks time to let you to calm your nerves and give you confidence and give you boldness so that you can enter into his presence through the living veil <laughs> the blood of christ his body and then take help whatever help you need in time of your distress glory to god say i am in the general assembly so if you have not yet accepted redemption if you have not yet accepted salvation if you have not yet accepted jesus in spirit and in truth as your substitute you see salvation makes me mad salvation makes gives me a mind that if i am to totally articulate my understanding of jesus christ you will say that i'm blaspheming blasphemy is about speaking evil speaking insult against god and what is of god because my understanding of substitution i studied the old testament i preach a lot of from scriptures in the old testament because until you actually understand what the old testament said in symbols and signs and actions you will not understand what christ fulfilled he said i came not to do away with this but to fulfill to make sure everything that was said everything that was done everything that was practiced is fulfilled so how do you know what christ has fulfilled for you you have to study you have to know what was practiced what was done what was what was shown in types in shadows in the old testament some ignorant preachers they tell you that is useless and they cast it through it trash it in a dustbin of ignorance and ineptitude spiritual ineptitude and then they give people understanding of the new testament without foundation and so people talk about redemption they don't understand what redemption is they talk about atonement they don't under, they don't have a picture of atonement they just have words and quote scriptures without being in touch with the reality so i have taken time to study the scripture by the grace of god i have come to have understanding about the christ that changes everything about me changes my mind changes everything about me so that if i'm to truly articulate what goes on in my prayer with god in my relationship with god in my understanding of god in my status in god if i talk about it some religious people will say that is blasphemous because the issue of substitute at that point that jesus christ did something first of all he said in the garden if it is me you are looking for let these ones go so let these ones go i take the place of these ones and these ones can take my place in freedom i am eternally free i'm powerful and glorious nothing can bound me but since you look for somebody take me bind me get me bound and let these ones go free that's substitute so every day i walk i walk in the freedom of the one who accepted my chains so when i see chain i say mr chain i was already bound so this one cannot hold me and chain will say i remember when they bound jesus is you that was born because everything being equal you should have been bound but he took your place and you go it is legal when you take something for another thing you cannot come back for that other thing i don't know am i communicating the heavenly world the spiritual world is strictly legal the spiritual world is strictly legal things follow specific laws and principles you can cut corners in the physical in the spiritual you cannot cut corners the devil works according to principles laws and principles and they on that's why if you know the word of god you are very powerful because the word of god articulates the law of the spirit the law of freedom in the spirit the law of liberty in the spirit the law of healing of the, the, everything that the word of god speaks about is about your wholeness your freedom so if you know it and not just knowing the word of god in the head 
But you know the word of God in your life as intact as, as becoming what God has done in his word. Everything that had happened in the cross applies to you. So when you walk through whatever, in your sickness, it is called stripes in the Bible. And there is already stripes. You already bore the stripe. That sickness already took place on the cross. It already took place when he was when he was striped, when he was broken, when he was smitten, when he was crushed. All of that, you were the one who should have borne them because you deserve to have borne them. But the one who was not deserving of it took it so that you, the deserving of it, will not take it. Am I communicating? So if you are saved in Christ Jesus, you have comprehensive insurance policy of heaven that covers everything. It qualifies you to live a life that can truly be called God's life on earth. The problem is that you don't even understand salvation. That's why you have to stay in this process. This process will be, going to, will, will be talking about the making of the firstborn. You come to know how God, does God make his firstborn. In a couple of weeks, we'll begin to know. And we will deal with the heart of issues of salvation. And so salvation is not just about saying, Jesus, I am saved. I uh, am forgiven. It is, it is deeper than that understanding of the intricacies of the substitution of the sinless taking the place of the sinner so that a sinner can enjoy the status of the sinless. It is the one that did not deserve shame, the most glorious and the only glorious one, taking the shame and the disgrace of the useless one, so that the useless one now walks honorable in the heavenly place. I speak in the name of Jesus, even as, I'm, even as these words come, that liberty is coming to you. Freedom is coming to you. No sin will hold you. Lift up your two hands. Say, I drop sin. I drop rebellion. I drop my old nature on the cross where he was slain by his blood. I receive mercy. I receive redemption. I receive his life. I receive justification. I receive righteousness. I receive salvation. I receive substitution. I take his place while he took my place. I go free and I go free forever. I go free from sickness. Make sure the things you go free from. I go free from depression. Open your mouth and speak. I go free from glaucoma. I go free from arthritis. I go free from shame. I go free from disgrace. I go free. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. This is the benefits of those in the general assembly. Be seated. Be seated. And we have shared with you Exodus chapter 13 verses 1 and 2. And Exodus chapter 22 verse 29. And these two scriptures talk about one thing. That the firstborn of your sons you shall give to me. The firstborn of both man and beast it is mine this was god's command to the people of israel that's what you see in those two scriptures and last week we looked at two dimensions two elements in the definition of firstborn the word firstborn from the hebrew word and the understanding of the word of god in the old testament it is it is distilled firstborn is distilled into these words in understanding prominence prominence standing out preeminence I talked about those two words last week I want to add to that excellence so when we talk about the firstborn we are talking about the one who enjoys prominence that's the one who is prominent we are talking about the one who enjoys preeminence Study these words with all your might if you are interested in your destiny in Christ. The one who is preeminent in God. We are talking about excellence. Add this other word, excellence. We are talking about one who enjoys excellency. So when we say, oh, 
His excellency. There are people just because of office, status in the office for four years or at most eight years in Nigeria. They say, oh, his excellency, four years. His excellency, eight years. And after that, they can now carry it as part of their, re their retirement if the, or severance package. They say, oh, your former excellency or your excellency, the former so-so and so former. But in Christ, there is no former. Once you enter into Christ, excellency applies as as a current status, not something of former. Am I communicating? That's it. That's it. Former. Former. Former means there are certain areas, certain privileges you no longer enjoy because you are former. There are certain pleasures, certain abilities, certain powers in authority that you no longer enjoy because you are former. That because you are former. But in Christ Jesus, the one who is firstborn in Christ, through Christ, in the Father's household, his excellency, the excellence he enjoys as God's excellency on earth, is something of currency, something of newness, something that is current. Then the next word is priority. 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 Prior to. Prior, the word priority is a protocol language. Priority means what comes before others. What comes before others? Before others are considered, what enjoys priority? So there is a list of priority. He said, tell me what are your priorities? Oh, I have needs. But the needs, they, they fall within hierarchy of needs. I have needs, one, two, three, four. But okay, in all of this, what are your priorities? Okay, my priority, okay. In terms of what comes highest before others say yes okay it's this it's this one it's that one so once you are born again in christ jesus you enjoy the protocol list of yahweh the protocol list of the one called jehovah you become you enjoy priority you come prior you come before others you come before others are considered, before others are talked about, before others are lifted, you are lifted first. Before others are blessed, you are blessed first. Before others are honored, you are honored first. This is a mindset you should have. This is how you pray. If you are not begging for it, you are taking hold, you are taking, telling the devil. Because the point is this. God sent a package to answer the prayer of Daniel. Daniel but there was a prince of Pesha. The, print, the work of the prince of this world, the darkness of this world, is to make you accuse God. Is to make you doubt God. Is to make you insult God. Say, but God, your word says this. But look at, this is not what I'm enjoying. It is not from God. What God says is what God does. He says, you shall be the head and not what? It means you shall enjoy priority. You shall come in my protocol list. You shall be seated before others. In the protocol list of a special event, those are the people that are considered first in sitting arrangements, considered first in refreshment arrangements, considered first in souvenir and gift arrangements, Everything that happens, they are considered first. Now, if there is a leftover, if there are now empty places, and okay, so what do we do? Okay, whoever you want to bring, you know, just bring, just bring it, just, just, just put them there. He said, but we don't have enough gifts for them, but they don't need gifts. They are not in our priority list. Oh, praise God. It's a mindset. So when you know this, you can suspect. When the prince of Persia, the prince of the ancestry, the prince of the territory, the prince of occult and witchcraft, which, whose work is just to make you doubt God because it tries to resist the plan of God in your life. And this is why the scriptures say, resist him and he shall flee from you. 
Because we are not warring against flesh and blood, but against principalities and power. So if you don't understand, you cannot apply the power of the blood to talk about for we overcoming by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. What testimony? I testify that I enjoy the priority of God in Christ Jesus. Because he shed his blood for me. So prayer is not begging. Prayer of pagans is endless rambling in begging. God, Biko, Mary That's not prayer. That's not prayer. Just like I said, this is how you pray when you pray. It's giving a mindset and understanding of prayer. After I've studied and I've, I've written and I've preached on radio in those days, the series on the Lost Prayer. And it took me like 12 weeks to dissect it and deal with it. I have manuscripts. People say publish. I don't publish things so easily because I believe the best is yet to come. I'm sorry. I, I will go back to it. Um, he said, when you pray, you don't say beg. You don't say, I beg you. Like river, no, they lack rubbish. So, my, even though my sin will be as much as Many as the rubbish of the river. I want one canyon. Just show me mercy. Bong, bong, bong. Just get when you want to pray. Say, Oh, Father. <laughs> I am son. Our Father. Wow. Wow. Means you, you are entering into the place of status. Our Father gives you inheritance. An inheritance is rights, not begging. It's what you are entitled to by the law of inheritance. The law of the land it recognizes inheritance. That's why Harry and his brother, they are treated differently. Because of the law of inheritance. And just as say, enter into status. So prayer is a status relationship. It's not bong, bong, bong. It's not a beg you. It's not biko. It's not, please, I beg of you. He say, Father, my Father, who art in heaven. You make a distinction between this Father and the one that you call Father that does not deserve to call because the one who ran away. The one who was conned, abdicated. The one whose homecoming meant abuse to you. Somebody talking about being abused sexually by the Father. This is not the father we are talking about. So you are, once you say our father, you, you are in a hurry to make distinction. You are not like the father of my father that I'm told used to eat the heads of the daughters. You are not like the father of the fathers who, who married their, their finest daughters. You are, you are not like my, my heavenly father above all fathers. The father from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes his name from Malabo Shata Rende Prolakata when you talk about father you now know you are talking intimacy you are talking family you are talking closeness you are talking ancestry you are talking genealogy you are talking genotype and no genotype is required original godly <laughs> praise God so when they advertise certain things they say no they say original black no DNA required it means this one you see for yourself praise God God. <laughs> so you are proving to the devil I'm not a bastard I'm not begging from outside I belong to the inside everything that belongs to my father Jesus Christ gives us the language of what it means to call God father he said everything that belongs to my father belongs to me Malo Brososo. and he didn't say call him um, um, good God in heaven he said call him what my father it means by that you are saying everything that belongs to you belongs to me. So it's an understanding of rights. Understanding of rights given to you not by qualification of works, but by qualification of grace. So the son did all the work. So the Jews asked him in John's gospel, what shall we do in order to walk the work of God? Just guys told them, just believe in his son. Believe in his son that he paid the price for you. He did all the works that will make you son. So he did all the works. So it's not all my work. I, I work. I wake up in the morning when I don't feel like waking up to do the things I need to do that I don't feel like do, doing it in order to fulfill this call. I work. 
I try to work hard. I may not tell somebody I work hard enough, but I try to work hard. But that is not what makes me call him father. Is that Jesus worked hard on the cross, died my death, saw my shame, shed the blood on my behalf. And by his blood, I've been initiated into the father and a covenant relationship with the father by which I have rights in adoption to call him Abba, father. It means you are dealing with status. Shout status. Stand up, say Abba, father. Shout it louder like you belong. Abba, Father. That's it. That's it. So prayer is not begging. We are talking, be seated. I'm talking about priority. I'm talking about issue of priority. So prayer is enjoying, the, enjoying your place in the priority list of your Father. Glory to God. The sun shines upon everyone. The rain, rain, the rain falls on the roof of everyone. But there are certain things that come to those who can call him Abba, Father. Unfortunately, most of those who call him Father, they don't know what is their own. So they can't even ask for it. And if they see it, they feel it's too good for them. And if the devil fights it, he just says, the will of God. It is not, it doesn't belong to me. If it, if it belongs to me, it will come to me. Because they don't know what it means to take the sword of the word of God and do it. Prang, prang, and the devil runs away. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> So you can take the word of God and you bring it out from the shield and, and put it on the floor. When you do it like that, somebody say, like, when, when you bring out the word of God and speak like it is your word, you speak like it was written for you, you are doing and somebody say like, nah, this man knows something, let's back up, let's get out of this side. And you bring out the word of God concerning your marriage and the devil is trying to, to do nonsense and you bring out the word of God and you and the devil say, back up, back up, back up. Boing, he knows, he knows. We don't want to have trouble in this place. Leave that marriage alone. Stand up and do. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Because we already know these things. Uh, that it is written. Uh, La Bracata. It's already written. Uh, so when I announce the word, when I fast in the word, when I pray in the world, I am bringing out my sword and I'm putting it on the floor, a stony floor. Brrang, brrang, brrang. And I'm like, who did that? Say, nobody did that. I praise God. Praise God. Say, priority. Sir, you are mighty. Man, you are powerful. You are not an alien. When we talk about alien, we are talking about visitors that are just accommodated. And when they want to say certain things, they remind them, don't you know your father is not from here? Won't you keep quiet? And you say you bought a land and somebody told you this is the boundary of the land. Do you know is your father from here? For you to tell us the boundary of our land, go back and do whatever you were asked to do. But when it comes to our father, nobody can shift your boundary. Libra, man. If it is 5,000 square meter, nobody can now tell you, well, you are not from here. Take 2,000 square meter. Shut up your father. <laughs> My father has given me rights in this land. And you don't joke with me. And you bring out the sword. It is written. Brang, brang. Things will be here if you say he's from here. He knows he's from here. The difference between aliens and inhabitants, natives, is that when they speak about that, maybe on maybe on send do, maybe on them, we don't get them, we don't get the send do, no abanisong. I walk on it over a year, I'm gonna go yaris and go. So I'm from here, I'm a native, I'm not an alien, I'm not begging for space. I say sorry, we thought you just you're just begging for space it is by the word of god you announce you are not begging for space so god when jesus Christ introduced us to prayer i didn't say say i'm i'm begging of you please daddy this is what he said you see my father our father who art in heaven i salute you hallowed be thy name worship belongs to the son worship belongs to the son glory to god Worship songs can be sung by aliens, but worship belongs to the Son. 
hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. You see, what the son is talking about, he's not talking about shoe. It's not, the first thing is not your shoe. The first thing is not your womb. The first thing is not your marriage. The first thing, this is, a lot of you pray, you are pagans, you are aliens. And when you pray, the heavens are shut against you because you are coming from the place of slavery. You go into the present, you are fasting for seven days and it's all about them. What are you talking about? It's not even recognized in heaven. It's too insignificant to capture the attention of heaven. It's not seen in the radar of heaven. Because what, is, what belongs to sun is the throne. The sun looks the throne. The sun thinks the throne. The sun, the sun thinks the throne. The, the sun consider, meditates, behaves the throne. He walks like the throne belongs to him. Is heir apparent. If you go to Saudi Arabia, the man that is calling the shot in Saudi Arabia, Arabia is a young man, a new generation recreating Saudi Arabia. The father is an old aged man that sits there. And this man just walks around the whole world like he's the ruler of Saudi Arabia because he's called Air. He has rights without being the main one. That's what it means to be son. The people of the world understand this thing and the people of Christ, they don't understand that you walk into a shrine, they say, the devil, nothing it prospers, they say, nothing prospers, with the earth and its fullness, the, the earth and the fullness thereof, be, they belong to who? Tell me, what does the word say? It doesn't say it belongs to the devil and ancestors to, get out of this place, all you demonic spirit, in the name of Jesus, that place in junction by the blood of Jesus Christ, any day you try to cross, your, your altar is burned forever, and I banish you to hell forever, in Jesus name, amen. You take possession, Take possession. You are speaking like son. Because all the troops of the father, they are at your disposal. All the troops, all the armies of the father. You are considered first. You enjoy priority. You don't beg. You don't beg. There are certain people you don't ask help from. No matter how difficult it is, there are certain people you cannot say, help me. Sincerely, there are certain people that you cannot stand before them and talk about your needs. He said, God, I will, not, I will not do this. My father, I will not do this. I honor your name too much. Your name and your status on my head is too valuable for me to stand before someone who serves Satan and ask and beg for help. What kind of help? What can these satanic agents do for me? The earth and the fullness there of the heart of the king belongs to the Lord. It's in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he wants it cannot stand before the one who will glorify Satan tomorrow and say he helped me the Lord is my, do you know what the Holy Spirit is, he say when he comes he will be your helper, I will send you another helper glory to God, it's a mindset it's, the firstborn thing is a mindset thing, it's an understanding thing, I don't know I don't know how many of you woke up this morning and read at least a verse of the Bible, a chapter of the Bible I don't know when last you opened the Bible on your own and actually because your faces don't look like you have ever read the Bible. That's what you live on. Before you eat Gary, eat the word. Before you drink, eat the word. Just take it. It is the sword by which you scare hell away from your inheritance. Because every inheritance has trespassers. Every portion has those who will want to, to en encroach and, and put pressure on you to fold up and tell you, no, it's not as large as this. God, did God say you will be this blessed? Did God say you will be this powerful? Did God say you will be so blessed? Did God say you will be so lifted? Did God say within a short time you will rise so mightily? No, you don't know. You have to say, Father, watch in heaven, hallowed be your name, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and just because it seek you first, the kingdom. These other things will be added to you. This is the reason why believers are worst off in life. Because they don't understand. The people of the world, they understand the workings of the things of the world, the principality and the influences of this world. But the people of the kingdom, they are confused. They walk more like the people of the hell and walk by the principle of the world and then they blame God that God does not answer their prayer. Because they think prayer is begging. They think prayer is petition. The ancient way by which we were, that we were taught about prayer is that prayer is petition, is request. Give me, give me. So people have been kept in that infancy of just reducing everything in your relationship with God to give me, give me. Do you know what it means to be son? You have right to act, to do things and the father will recognize them. 
and it is written, you will decree a thing. And what will happen? It shall come to pass. That's what belongs to the Son. And it is by the word you have understanding what to decree and how to decree and when to decree. This word that I speak to you, they are spirits and they are life. So the word of God brings you the revelation of the spirit and the leading of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, receive priority mindset. I say receive priority mindset. In the name of Jesus Christ, receive priority mindset. Receive excellence mindset. Receive prominence mindset. Receive preeminence mindset. Shout, I am. Firstborn in, in Christ Jesus. Say, I am. Firstborn in Christ Jesus. I enjoy prominence in the household of the Father. I enjoy preeminence in the agenda of the Father. I enjoy excellency in the arrangement of the Father. I live in priority in the protocol list of the Father in Jesus' name. But see that there's another word, another word that is so close to priority, superiority. All these words, they define the firstborn status. We shall use scriptures to justify them. Superiority. Superiority is about being higher, being greater, being brighter, being better. A higher level, a bigger level, a mightier level, purer level. Superior means great and great and great above. A lifetime above. Superiority, there's another word, advantage. To have advantage, to have an edge, to be above, to be ahead. It still, it still ranks, it still goes and sings with priority and superiority. Advantage. Then there is the word above. Above, so the first one is the one that is above others. Above others in preeminence, in prominence, in excellence, in priority, in superiority and advantage. The eighth word, the octave. You can say the octave, the octave of the firstborn is dominion. It's dominion. The first man that God made on earth, Adam, was dominion, was above, superior, prior. That was firstborn. That was firstborn. That's why Jesus Christ is called last Adam. And he's called the first Adam. And the last Adam is called the image. Only two, only three categories of people are referred to in the scripture as image of God. But two specifically. The first Adam. Let us make man in our image and likeness. Jesus Christ in Colossians chapter 1 is the image of the invisible God. In Christ Jesus, we step into the image. So, the, the one that was given dominion, let us make man in our image and likeness. And let them be what? Let them have what? Dominion. Let them be above others. Let them be above things. What God gave to man now? Man is exploring deep space. America has launched stuff into, into deep space. And they are going, going, and going. Sometimes they will lose contact with NASA base. Sometimes they will reconnect. America has gone into deep space exploration while China is flexing muscle in the dark, in the far side, or on the far side of the moon, in the lunar exploration. America has gone further and further and further into deep space exploration. exploration. Send um, mass rover to, to the mass, to mass, to, to sample things, to look at things. It's flexing muscle beyond. All of this. Whether man, whether they believe in Christ or not, is a natural inheritance of God to man at the physical level, dominion. That's what science and in, invention and technology. So every year there is breakthrough in medical technology. Certain innovative and innovations, innovative uh, medical technology and innovations in medicine that will make treatments that were not possible, not even imaginable in years past. They are now available. It may be costly, but they are available. Why? That is the dominion mandate at the physical level. But there is a spiritual dimension that belongs to us in order to, in order to master the earth. So every child of God is supposed to be the best as an astronaut. 
It's supposed to be the best in engineering, the best in every field of your life. Why? Because you are the reinvention, so to say. You are the recreation of the pattern of the man that failed in Adam. The problem we have that people believe in Christ. They are God's children. And they use that to think they don't belong to this world. He said, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. But while you are in the world, you are the light of the world. Because just can't say, while I am in the world, I am what? The light of the world. And before he left, he said, you are what? The light of the world. So for as long as you are in the world, you are the light of the world. What are you doing with it? In your space, heaven expects you to be the best in your space. So people have used this gospel to make people mediocre, make people backward, make people helpless. The gospel is the greatest empowerment that exists in heaven and on earth. There is no other thing like it. That as a student, because God lives in you, Christ lives in you, the Holy Ghost lives in you, you enjoy priority. What you don't understand does not exist if it is to be taught in class. You don't say, I don't like mathematics. Shut up! It's not a matter of liking. It's a matter of mastering. It's dominion. Our children should be taught dominion before they know how to do any other thing. I love what the first lady is doing with our children. At a communion level. I, I, I just love how my children say, I am powerful. My second son, he may be playing around, but when he say, I am strong, he gets angry like he wants to beat up somebody. I am strong. I am powerful. He looks for somebody to beat up. I am powerful. I can do all things. It is a mantra. It is what people speak without knowing what. But I love how the children will be able to associate powerful with the exception of power. I don't know what I'm communicating. Sir, so this thing is a mind. I don't know what we are doing with God. I used to say people use, use the name of just to kill cockroach. So they see cockroach in the night and kill it. Ah, Jesus! Is that all? And you use the name of Jesus to kill snake. I say, Jesus. Just that. And you use the name of Jesus. All that you have ever done with the name of Jesus to kill snake, kill cockroach. Sir, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name, isn't it? Nothing can stand against. What a wonderful name. Then, then, oh, what a wonderful name it is. <laughs> what a wonderful name it is. <laughs> the name of Jesus Christ, my King. <laughs> what a wonderful name it is. <laughs> Nothing can. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is. <laughs> what a powerful name it is. <laughs> the name of Jesus Christ, my King. <laughs> what a powerful name it is. <laughs> And nothing can stand against it. What a powerful name it is. The name of Jesus. Oh, my love, oh, shut up. La Messia to pray. Kapole, Master. Just rise and speak in the Holy Bible. Pray and also pray. Just lift up your two hands and just, just speak in the Holy Ghost. La pray and also just rise to your feet and lift up your two hands and just just call the name of Jesus just bless the name of you Kalabrosik Malianda Sekato Sando Tolo Masi Brekato Leato Breka Palabrosekate Leanda Sekata Le Masunde Kete Pralabo Just speak in the Holy Word just call that name Leano Sianata what a wonderful name it is. <laughs> what a wonderful name it is. <laughs> the name of Jesus Christ, my King. 
Kalabrusika. What a wonderful name it is. <laughs> Nothing compares to this. <laughs> what a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be seated. It just feels like that's how we end this service today. Priority, advantage, aboveness, dominion. So the first man that was created, that first man was dominion. The last Adam, dominion, for government shall be upon his shoulder. Glory to God. Now, let's talk, let's, let me give you scriptures. I've talked about that, that the issue of firstborn. Firstborn is prominence, preeminence, excellence, excellency, priority, superiority, advantage, above dominion. Let's look at what the scripture is saying about this. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 3. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 3. He says, Reuben, you are my firstborn. Now, he goes ahead to talk about his understanding of firstborn. This is a man who met God in Peniel. Who met God in the face of God. This is the man who has encountered God twice in location. He fought in one location. He slept in one location. And he saw a ladder that ascended to the heavens. And he heard God speak. And this is the man who on his return encountered God in the Peniel. Encountered God in the Peniel. And glory to God. And this is a man who has understanding of firstborn. He said, Reuben, you are my firstborn. My mind. So firstbornship or firstbornhood, firstborn status is mind. And the beginning of my strength. So his strength. The excellency of dignity. Excellency in dignity. NIV say, will say excellence. Look at that in NIV. And as he says, excelling in honor, excelling in power, excelling in dignity, excelling in power. So you can see excellency there. This is firstborn. This is firstborn. In then I say, Reuben, you are my first firstborn, my mind, my first sign of my strength. God flexes his muscle through his firstborn. God fights his battles through his firstborn. So, might and strength of God, they find expression in the firstborn. The victory of God is revealed in his firstborn. That is why the father did not worry about the son facing the devil on the cross. That's why the father was not bothered about Jesus being descending into hell. He said, what will happen to him? Will he be able to come out? Because Jesus carries the fullness. The scripture says, says in him, the fullness of divinity is found in his completeness in bodily form. So Jesus, while walking on earth, he carried the fullness, the totality of the divine authority and power of the Father. So as he went to hell, he went with the whole of God's power. There was no doubt that no devil will stand against him. There was no doubt that anything can will stop him. There was no doubt the Father will not worry. Do you know why the father permits battles to come your way? As a child of God, some people say, before I got born again, before I got close to God, things were easier for me. I didn't have to go through all of this. Suddenly, as I drew closer to God, I began to face so many battles. Because God is flexing muscles through you. God is using you to teach principalities and powers that the, the stones that were rejected by the, by the builders have become the cornerstones. God says, those things that the world considers nothing, it turns them into glory. Am I, com am I communicating? So God does not fight the devil with his might. God fights the devil with a lower level. That's the greatest thing. You know, when man flesh, this is the whole thing, that God will depend on a man to fight against spirit. So the whole power of God finds expression in you 
and you are still flesh and blood, subject to appetite, to temptations and seduction, but the power of God in you is so trusted by God that in the midst of all things you will prevail, for in all these things we are more than what? Conqueror. This is the mystery of God's glory. So when you fight battles and prevail against the devil, that's the greatest worship to the Father. The Father trusts that the name of Jesus in your life will bring down giants. The greatest pleasure of the God of Israel was David with stone and sling bringing down Goliath. Not an army. He said, you come against me with javelin, with all of this. But I come against you in the name of the God of Israel that you defy. Wow. And he charged and ran towards him and brought him down. That was worship. That was worship. So worship is not coming to hide in church. As I came to do praise and worship for seven days in church. I did not eat. I did not drink. And you are running away from battles. After you fast and pray, go and dare the things that cut off your father's blessing. Go and dare things that make people small in your generation. Go and dare things in your office. Go back and dare the dawn in the university that said you will not graduate. After fasting and prayer, appear before him and say, sir, I have come back. Um, thank you so very much, sir, for allowing me to see you, my results. Look at me in the eyes. And he will call his secretary. Secretary, his result. Long story, cut short. So you don't come and hide in church. There's a young man who has been hiding in church. I have evict evicted him in church. He comes to church. When you come worship, go and live outside walk outside, make money outside and give to people who come to church who cannot come and hide in, hide in church and pray forever. Go on, go walk, do something. Go do something. This is the revelation that makes me evict you in church. If you have been thinking I'm wicked, if you are thinking I will change my mind, I will never change my mind. You will not hide in church. Go and fight battles and overcome. You have finished school of the Holy Spirit in one year. You have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. You fast and pray, breathe and pray. So why are you hiding? Go out. The time has come. If you say God has not told you, I represent God. I have told you. I've told you. I've told you. Have you seen God face to face? You see God through the people he has sent. Sir, I represent God in this place. If I tell you the time has come, I trust the grace of God in your life. Sir, this is what I know that I will not allow anybody to pack and come and hide in church. If I'm hiding from the devil, get out. The devil is not anywhere. Go. You are the devil. Go. Glory to God. I say glory to God. So, the firstborn. So, you can use this. I told you, you will not understand what the scripture is saying in the New Testament until you have the rubrics, the elements in the Old Testament. Now, let's take this scripture and apply it to that Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 12. Uh, chapter 12. Let's go from that verse 22. But you have come to, or to verse 23, to make it short. To the general assembly, you have come to the general assembly. And church of what? Of those with strength. The firstborn here is not natural firstborn. So it's the firstborn of God. That means you are, the, you are the sign of God's strength. You are the sign of God's might. You are the excellency of God's honor. So God has reason to allow you to be tested. He knows that what he has made you of the material, the raw material of your making, the raw material by which you are, you are formed and fished and brought forth, is insurmountable, is impregnable, is impossible to break. So he allows you to meet something so that in all of these things you will return praise to him. Glory to God. I say glory to God. This is the understanding about a child of God being exposed to warfare. The father is testing his fabrication. Who tests the vehicle? Who, who builds a vehicle and not, does not test it? If people have the, the, the right brothers who, who were the first to get something to fly, a machine to fly. People had tried before them. They failed. Others were trying and so close, but they were the first to find a way to get it. They tested it. So the father tests his machines, his strength on earth, his power on earth. You are the carrier of his power. Command things. And when the angel met Gideon, he told Gideon, go in the, with this, the power, this power of yours. 
There is a power. And that was in the Old Testament. We are now in the church. The general assembly where everyone, everyone according to this scripture, everyone is the might of God. Everyone is the strength of God. Everyone is the excelling honor of God. The excelling power of God. Everyone is the excelling honor of God. Everyone is a sign, a sign. When we talk about the sign, a symbol, a representative, something by which you will know. So you are the sign of his, the sign of his might. You are the sign, you are the sign of his strength. You are the sign of his might. You are a sign. So when people meet you, you represent. You are what? When somebody wants to touch the mind, they test the strength of God. How strong is the strength of God? Somebody sees you. You, you become. You become the opportunity for God to be exalted and reveal his glory. This is what it means to be firstborn. It's not a company of beggars. It's not a company of lazy people. How do you know this? You don't study the word of your father. You don't know your God. You don't know God for yourself. Look for hungry pagan, hungry pagan seers who have nothing else to show you except how many witches are against you. Only The only thing our, our, our prophets and seers from hell see, they see you on the road. Oh, oh, hold on. Oh, sorry. Who did this to you? What I see. As some people do that say, in the name of Jesus, I bind that spirit in you. You will no longer lie to another person from today. That spirit has left you. It happened in the scripture when Paul rebuked that spirit. I have rebuked you in the name of Jesus. You will no longer. Nobody will tell you anything about fear after that. I cannot be born into the household of might. I am the sign of God's might. I am the sign of God's strength. I am the carrier of his excelling honor. And you greet me with fear. Nonsense. When the angel met Mary, who was destined to bring forth the son, he said, blessed are you among women. If you know who I am, that I'm a firstborn who look at me also, blessed are you, you are both others. You are superior. You enjoy priority. You walk in preeminence and prominence. Don't let anybody deceive you. No battle can stand against you. The name of Jesus works for you. You will live in the priority list of God. Oh, you are blessed of Jehovah. Praise God for you. Please stand in that grace. Don't let anything corrupt you. Sir, that's a prophet that speaks the truth. He knows his substance. Don't come and joke and tell me useless fear. Some people see useless things and come and tell me, I see darkness everywhere. I see demons were invading this place and people were running away. I say, is it you? Is it you that saw this place? I'm the one that God showed this place and we came and be like, how come? He's no longer showing me this place. And he shows you and all you see is your demons. The demons of your father that live in your dreams because you are coming to church and they transpose themselves as um, augmented reality and transpose upon the church. And you tell me demons are running around the church. This man. Glory to God. We are the assembly that we are the sign. Stand up and flex, muscle. I'm the sign of God. Jehovah's strength. Allah bo shata. Down to what I'm got. I am the sign. <laughs> I am the sign of God. Jehovah's strength. I excel in honor. I excel in power. <laughs> I am the sign. Pour like libation. I am the sign. Pour it around your boundary. I am the sign. <laughs> I am the sign of the strength. Put that scripture for me. Put that scripture for me. Use that scripture to pour libation. Call yourself by name. I, Patrick, I am the firstborn. I am the might of God. I am the first sign of the strength of my God. I excel in the honor of my God. I excel in the power of my God. I enjoy the priority of my God. I enjoy the superiority of my God. I enjoy the preeminence of my God. I enjoy the, pre the prominence of my God. I enjoy the excellency of my God. I enjoy the exceeding strength of my God. I enjoy the wealth of my God. Halabo shakata. Lassia, Namakato Precata, Meniata Laboshe Kanda, Malabrasi Catole Macata, Mando to Preca Palabra Kanda, 
Shanda to pre le bosikata. Meli ya to pre kanda. Who is speaking in the Holy Ghost? Who is speaking in the Holy Ghost? No way. No way. Say, I'm not living in fear. I cannot live in fear. Say, I'm not living in fear. I cannot live in fear. Say, I'm not living in fear. I cannot live in fear. Say, I'm not living in fear. I cannot live in fear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. One more scripture and we are done. By the way, the Hebrew word for firstborn, the Hebrew word, the Hebrew root for firstborn is yeta, 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 rather, yeta. Y E T H E R, yeta. It means excess. So the word prominence, excellency in Hebrew is yete. So Jacob was saying, You are the yete. You are my yete. You are my excelling honor. Means excess. Excess. Means preeminence. I've already told you. Preeminence. It means abundance means abundance means exceedingly so the firstborn is the one when just excess preeminence abundance who is exceedingly greater than others who is excellent fully another one is fully more remainder more remainder so when we talk about Reuben you are my mind the first sign of my strength excelling the word excelling Excelling means preeminence, abundance, exceeding, exceedingly. It means excellence, it means fully, it means more. So the father was saying, you are my firstborn. You are more than others for me. You are greater than the remainder. And when everything is gone, you are the remainder. Oh, glory to God. That's what the scripture is talking about. That's what the scripture is talking about by saying excellence. All of this all of this all of that all of what we have been talking about as prominence preeminence excellence priority superiority advantage above dominion is summarized in the hebrew word yeta so the hebrew word is a yeta personality excess it does not god does not just give a measure that is just normal there is an overflowing overflowing experience there is an overflowing experience, preeminence abundance so the first one is the one with abundant status the first one is the one with exceeding something that exceeds it goes beyond boundary it's not limited it's not restricted why you are the excelling power of god you are the excelling honor of god you are a sign of god's strength so the yeta the first one is the yeta personality is more the word is more fully fully great fully mighty fully beautiful remainder and next Two weeks i've told you i will i will share something with you about that this whole thing is a the firstborn status is about grace and not age let's end with this scripture genesis chapter 27 verse 18 to 29 genesis chapter 27 genesis <clears throat> chapter 37 27 verse 18 to 29 it's talking about it's talking about the portion of the firstborn whoever enjoys the grace of God whoever is adopted in Christ Jesus naturally enjoys the firstborn experience the, the firstborn blessing Genesis chapter 27 this scripture is revealing in the Old Testament what we enjoy in Christ Jesus and I want you to pay attention so he went to his father from verse 18 from verse 18 Joseph went to his father and said my father and he said here I am who are you, my son? Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Yes, I am Esau, your firstborn. I am Esau, your firstborn. This is a drama between Jacob. This is a drama between Jacob and Esau. But this is Jacob going to lie. I am Esau, your firstborn. I have done just as you told me. Please arise. Sit and eat of my game that your soul may bless me. Verse 20, but Isaac said to his son, how is it that you have found it so quickly, my son? And he said, because the Lord your God brought it to me. Verse 21, Isaac said to Jacob, please come near, that I may feel you. Come near, that I may feel you, my son. Whether you are really my son, Esau or not. 
Verse 22. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, Oh, the voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau. Now, this is somebody who is not deserving, but is in the presence. Somebody who's not deserving, but has carried something. You know, when Jesus died on the cross, he died on the cross so that we can carry something to the Father. And as we carry something to the Father, the voice may be the voice of a useless man from Odorikot. The voice can be the voice of a girl from Uruikbe. The voice can be the voice of somebody from, from Ogu, from Ogun, from Ondo, from Ekiti, or somebody from Enugu, from Asaba. It does not matter. But you have brought something. Am I communicating? You have brought what Jesus did. His blood ransoms you. His blood changes you. His blood has purchased you. So it's not about voice. Voice tells you of nativity. Voice tells you, oh, you are a, a, a Yoruba man, an Igbo man, um, a Fik man, Calaba man. That's what voice will tell you. But the works of Jesus will tell you, you are the one qualified. Esau was the one qualified. What is it that took Jacob to his sight? It's because he carried what he wanted. What the father wanted is what the son did on the cross so when you accept what the son did on the cross your voice no longer counts against you where you come from your ancestry in the flesh they no longer stand against you i don't know where i'm communicating yes somebody may say but but you, are, you don't look tall enough you don't look fine enough but god is looking at what you are carrying you are carrying the blood of jesus christ you are carrying the dead of jesus by his stripes he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquity the punishment, the chastisement that our brother's peace uh, had been laid upon him uh, and by stripes uh, we have been healed uh, and because we have been transferred uh, transferred from the dominion of darkness uh, into the kingdom of the beloved uh, where we have redemption even the forgiveness of sin uh, because by his blood he has ransomed us uh, from every tribe and tongue and people and nation uh, and he has made us into priests and kings uh, so that we can save our God and we shall reign on the earth that's what the blood of Jesus is speaking and so when you carry that you are the Jacob who does not deserve the Jacob with the wrong voice but you feel like you saw you feel like the one who paid the price you feel like the one that was rejected you feel like the one that was crucified you carry the impact of the crucifixion you carry the weight of the dead and you enter into the sight of the father and you say my father, I am Jesus, your son. My father, I am your son. I obeyed you. I paid the price. He said, but your voice doesn't look like it. But what you carry looks like it. It is the blood that speaks more than that of ever. Not my voice. Halaboshat. Libra Sekato. So what happened after that? Verse 24. Let's, let's cut this long story short. Verse 24, then he said, Are you really my son Esau? Like, are you really my son Jesus Christ? Have you paid the price that I said? It's only Jesus that uh, the price belongs. He said, yeah. he said, yes, I am. That's what it means to believe in Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am redeemed. Yes, the redemption. Yes, the blood has been shed. Yes, the, uh, yes, the price has been paid. Yes. That is how Barabbas was set free. The criminal, the murderer. And Jesus Jesus died. He said, yes, sir. I'm now standing in the name of Jesus. I, I'm now standing in the finished work of Jesus. I'm now standing in the blood of... I, I'm now standing in the dead. Of, I'm now standing... I have been atoned for. I have been redeemed. I, I am now your son. I am named in the name of your son. I carry Jesus. Sorry if I say I am Jesus here. Yeah. I represent Jesus. I'm a witness of Jesus. I'm a witness. He paid the price. And that blood has made a way for me. That's why I stand here. Verse 25. He said, okay, bring it near to me. 
That's how your fasting makes sense. Bring it near to me. That's how your prayer makes sense. Bring it near to me. For the blood has made a way through the veil. Bring it near to me and I will eat of my son's game so that my soul will bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and he brought him wine and he drank. Verse 26, then his father Isaac said to him, come near now and kiss me, my son. This is intimacy and relationship. Everything being equal, it was Esau that was supposed to do this. But this thing is not about first or second. This one is the one who has access. Whoever has access can come near and kiss. Whoever has access by the blood. Whoever has, this is what redemption does. It gives you access. This is what forgiveness does. It gives you access that you can interplay with God. You can intercourse with God. You can interact with God and intermix with God and interpose with God. That you can intermingle with God and laboshaka and have godly resort verse 27 and he came near and he kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him surely he said surely the smell of my son now it's no longer about Jacob or Isaac all the tests have been passed it's no longer saying Isaac or Jacob he was looking for his son and in his mind he had only one son the first son is the only son I don't know what I'm talking to somebody and he said the smell of my son this is not the smell of Jacob this is not the smell of, 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 of Esau it's the smell of who? the smell of my son that is why just guys died so that when you are dressed in Jesus the father can say the smell of my son when you are washed in Jesus the father can say the smell of my son when you are Ah, when you have been sanctified justified by the death of Jesus the father can say the smell of my son what happens let us see the scripture the smell of my son like the smell of the field like the, that the Lord has blessed surely the smell of my son is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed best 28 <laughs> Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth. I'm talking about the portion of the firstborn and plenty of grain and wine. Next verse. Let people serve you dominion. Shout dominion. That's it. Firstborn is above. I mean, let people serve you means be above people. Be above even your brother. Be above those who have been above you. Be above those who insult you. Be above those who don't respect you. So, let your people serve you and nations bow down to you you are not just above people you are above nations you are above territories national principalities and power territorial principalities and power continental principalities and power so let nations uh, not one nation uh, not just Nigeria not just Nigeria and Ghana not just Nigeria and Guinea and other nations uh, of West African sub region not just nations in Africa not just in Ethiopia or Somalia not just nations in Europe not just Russia so nations bow every nation you enter into into they, uh, every nation the nation of childbearing let them bow to you nation of wealth creation let them bow to you nation of excellence wherever you go to let nations bow down to you be master over your brethren be master over things rule above things the only existence you have is rulership welcome the, the, to the general assembly we are rulers are naturally we are those who are above others those who superiority they say rule over your brethren master over your brethren and let your mother's sons bow down to you including whoever is there that should have been here and that is not all whoever does not bless you is in trouble whoever blesses you is blessed and whoever hates you will not die can stay up who is that to say you are the Lord of the beginning who are with God come out here come out here uh, can you raise your hand wherever you are? Wherever you are, wherever you are. No, 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 not set, not, not set of Ruah. The other set of, come on, come on, come up here. Come up here. Lift up to her. Say, Lord Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, say, Lord Jesus Christ. I accept you. I let go of my original nature. 
I let go sin, I let go fears, I let go wretchedness, I let go lust. Mention things you let go, things that downgrade you, things that downgrade you, things that debase you, things that bring you down, things that treat the things that things that twist you, things that distort you, things that are molesting the presence, things that are corrupting the the presence and distorting the presence. So Lord Jesus, I accept the blood of redemption. I accept the blood of salvation. I accept the blood. I accept the I accept the blood. I accept I accept, I accept the blood. I accept the blood. I accept the blood. I accept the blood. So Lord Jesus, come into my life. You are the new life. Can you speak in the Holy Spirit? Everywhere. Everywhere. Say Lord, I accept you. I accept you, my King. I accept you. By you, I call God my Father. By you, I call God my Father. By you, I call God my healer. By you, I rule. Say, I accept the grace of rulership, the anointing of rulership. I accept the grace of healing. I accept the grace of power. Say, I'm healed. As I speak, you are healed. As I speak, you are restored. As I speak, your chains are broken. As I speak, captivity is broken. As I speak, captivity is broken. As I speak, spells are broken. As I speak, addictions are broken. Lay your hand on your forehead. I command the spirit of fornication to leave you. I, spirit, I command the spirit of immorality to leave you. I command yokes of addiction to be broken. I command spells of sickness to leave you. I command life to be living in you. I command might to be mighty in you. I command strength to be strong in you. You are the sign of God's strength. You are the might of God. You are the selling honor of God. You are the selling power of God. You are the priority of God. You are the superiority of God. You are the preeminence of God. You are the prominence of God. You are healed for this reason. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Nothing can stop you. Raise your voice and speak. This week, nothing will stop me. 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 What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Lift up those hands, worship. And nothing can stand. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name. And what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name, what a powerful name it is. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ my King. What a powerful name it is, nothing can stand against. What a powerful name it is, the name of Receive, be filled with his presence. Lift up those hands. Be filled with his presence. Be filled with his presence. Chains have been broken. Yokes have been broken. Doors of prison have been opened. 
come out into your doing the impossible. Say, I emerge. I do the impossible. In Jesus' name. Amen. Clap the hands like God is ready. It's better you stay there. It's better you. Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. I bless your seat. I bless your offering. I bless your tithe. Look to the multimedia screen for whatever you need for online transfer. If you need an envelope, please can you indicate by the lift of hand. Whatever ministers is running around and serve and serve people and serve people and serve people. So for your tithe, for your offering, ask for specific envelopes for your first fruit, for your first fruit and partnership. We need your partnership to take this word to the ends of the earth on radio and TV and in crusades and meetings across the world. Your seat in partnership monthly, one off of gift in a year or taking a partnership initiative of monthly, fill a form, so be part of us in what we do. And if you want to bless and refresh the prophet, the one God has set to lead this movement and refresh you and bless you. Paul said, for, for if we have shared spiritual things with you, is it too much that we partake in all your good things? So if you have good things to share, that's the account. If you have thanksgiving in your heart, you have come to know the status of your firstborn and um, you are blessed by it and you want to bless God for that and what God is doing in your life and this season of doing the impossible. I want to thank God for me for how God has brought me through for your sake and on your account. A thanksgiving. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to the di diversity of the gift of your children and the specificity of your blessings for these gifts, I'm asking that you pour your blessing pour it out completely in the order of your son Jesus Christ the firstborn and bless these ones with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places translating in financial excellence translating in fruitfulness of the womb and marriage to the, in the, to the singles and blessing and settlement and beauty and glory in marriage and the strengthening of those who are weak in every area businesses are breaking forth, breaking forth governmental appointments a creation of wealth in private sector in the finance in legal in architecture in engineering in every space they create Creative. I am asking in ministries, Lord, there is a, a diversity and multiplicity of expressions of your prosperity in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And so you are blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.